I'm Todd Demel, and I'm the art director for Lord of the Rings Online. Behind me is the Turbine Creative Studio, where the Turbine artists work together to create the art assets for all Turbine's franchises. Over the past year, we've been working together to create the assets for Dunland. So Chris and the World Team sets the tone for what the art team then takes and builds into assets. Uh, the art team will build the characters, the architecture, the deco that the World Team then uses to build out the landscape and the hubs and environments. Uh, we've been working really closely with the World Team as we've uh, developed Dunland. And Chris is an expert in, in Tolkien and, and Tolkien uh, geography and culture. Hi, I'm Chris. I'm a senior world builder on Lord of the Rings Online, and I'm working on Dunland right now. We decided to do Dunland because it gives us an opportunity to go behind enemy lines. When Saruman decides to attack Rohan, a lot of his allies come from Dunland. So by developing Dunland, it gives us a chance to see where these hillmen come from and what drives them to hate the Rohirrim so much. In the books, they're a large and fairly cohesive slavering horde of barbarians. So we decided to develop them a bit more and have some clans of them that are friendlier, some clans that are hostile, and some clans that you don't really know what they're up to. The Dunlending NPC set is one of the largest sets of NPCs that we built for Lord of the Rings Online. It's uh, got six different tribes, and each one of those tribes is made up of four uh, unique models, and each one of those models has a bunch of uh, smaller variations, hair and hair color and clothing color. So when you walk through a Dunlending camp, you're going to see a lot of uh, very unique looking individual uh, NPCs. This is a part of the world that gets mentioned a lot in the books, but we never really get to see it up close. Uh, so when it came time to make Dunland, the big challenge was making it varied and interesting based on very scant descriptions in the books. But that gives us still a lot, of, uh, a lot of leeway in the kinds of terrains that we could explore. So in addition to the craggy hills and, and, and woods, we have a large unpleasant bog, a haunted forest that's a remnant of what used to be the much larger woodland that covered most of Middle Earth, and we have a land that's dominated by barrows. All the cultural assets, the characters, the monsters, the architecture, the points of interest, uh, we've had a lot of fun developing all these bit parts of the content, and uh, there's so much in there to discover. Uh, I hope you have as much fun exploring Dunland as we've had building it.